7 News starts with breaking news. Breaking right now at noon, there are more than 200 new COVID-19 cases in Allegheny County today. That new daily number just came out within the last hour. They show 218 new cases out of more than 1,800 test results. This is the second time in the last week that the county has had more than 200 new cases a day. The county is also reporting one new death and four new hospitalizations today. Pittsburgh Public School District Service Center is closed today. An employee there tested positive for COVID-19. Pittsburgh Fulton and Highland Park is also closed today because of a potential exposure. Both will reopen tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Shop and Save in Penn Hills is closed because another employee tested positive. This is now the fourth employee to get the coronavirus there. The, this uh, last time this particular employee worked was on June 29th. The other employees have not worked since June 25th and the 27th. That store in Penn Hills will stay closed for a deep cleaning. So as the number of new cases in Allegheny County is still high, we are finding out that doctors have another concern, people putting off their appointments because of the coronavirus. Channel 11's Mike Holden spoke to a doctor about the risk a lot of people are taking by doing that. The coronavirus pandemic has put our daily routines on pause for the most part, but health officials and local doctors are stressing that it is important you continue to go back for routine checkups because it could truly save your life. COVID-19 has impacted each and every aspect of our life, from work to play. However, health officials say there has been a recent trend of people who have stopped keeping up with doctor's visits and appointments. They've seen a drop off in screenings, blood tests, and overall ER and urgent care visits nationwide, including right here in Pittsburgh. Doctors with UPMC say the truth is doctor's offices and hospitals are some of the safest places to be because of the intense sanitizing and prevention measures in place. Dr. Donald Yeely says they are taking necessary steps to keep everyone safe from pre screenings to immediate checks when you arrive. He says, although you may feel nervous or apprehensive, do not delay treatments. Doctors can talk with you over the phone or through video conferencing if it's not necessarily an emergency. When you choose to delay medical care, whether it's when you're having new symptoms yourself, maybe completely unrelated to the virus, or you're skipping routine care, you run the risk of making a worse decision because of the fear of COVID-19. And one patient we spoke with says following her gut instincts saved her life. We're breaking down her side of the story and why it's so important to get to the doctor if you think something's wrong. For Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting this afternoon, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. A lot of local cases are being linked to coronavirus hotspots like Myrtle Beach. That's according to our news partners at the Trib. We wanted to pass that along because we know a lot of you would like to vacation there in Florida, where there have also been a record number of cases. You know, you might think we actually live down south with the hot and humid weather that we have had here over the last few days. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Daniel Dozier is tracking how long this heat wave will last. Daniel? Jen, it's like a furnace out there for sure. <laughs> the temperatures are already approaching 90 degrees at this noon hour in Pittsburgh. It is 88 degrees, little wind to cool us off. 88 in Indiana, it's 91 in Greensburg right now. Dew points are in the 60s across the majority of the area. have had a dip here in Pittsburgh down into the 50s, which makes it feel like 86 right now. But the feels like in Greensburg is 90. So keep hydrated if you are out and about. So far this year, we've had four 90 degree days. The average is nine. The warmest was yesterday so far this year at 93 degrees. We do look to top 90 this afternoon. We'll take a look at that forecast together. Plus, I've got an update to the rain chances over the next couple of days. I'll show you that as well. Still to come. Danielle, thanks so much. And new at noon here, the heat was an issue for firefighters who battled a fire at a roofing company. It was in Pittsburgh's Esplanade neighborhood. And this morning when we went out there, we could see smoke still coming from the Miller Thomas Geikus roofing, roofing Company. It's on Stanford Street. The fire chief told us they had to actually rotate the firefighters because of that extreme heat that Danielle was just talking about there. There also was some concern about hazardous materials. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Channel 11 is working to find out more tonight for you at 5. Allegheny County police need help figuring out how a man died in Aetna. Police found the 52-year-old man lying in an alley yesterday morning. He wasn't responding when police got to him on South Spring Street and were told that he died at the hospital. This happened near a lot of businesses and homes, so Allegheny County police are hoping that someone saw something.
Happening now, police are searching for a woman who might be in the Pittsburgh area. She apparently is missing. Take a good look at your screen here. This is a picture of Don Leo Dwayne Mansion. The last time anyone saw her, she was in San Francisco, but she might be in West Mifflin now. Police say that she drives this red Kia Rio. It has Florida license plates that might help you recognize it if you happen to see this car. So if you see it or if you see her, call police. We do have a traffic alert to pass along to you this afternoon. If your bus typically goes under the tunnel under Mount Washington, it'll be going a different route for the next two years. Starting tonight, it'll close from 8 p.m. until 4.30 a.m. as crews are replacing some lighting and cable inside that tunnel. All Port Authority light rail vehicles and buses will be detoured through Allentown. A Turtle Creek man is dead and another man is recovering after a shooting in Homewood. Police were called to Muller Street and Ferris Court just before 10 Saturday night. That's where they found Justin Gomez with a gunshot wound. He died at the hospital. The second man who was shot apparently was shot in the shoulder and showed up to the hospital on his own and is in stable condition. It's been more than a year and a half now since Marquise Brown fell to his death from a dorm room window at Duquesne. His mother says she still has a lot of questions about what happened moments before, and the way that she is bringing attention to his case is striking. Here's Channel 11's Shelly Bortz. No way anyone should send their kid to college and have them return to them in a casket. Danielle Brown, the mother of Duquesne University football player Marcus Jalen Brown, who died after jumping 16 stories from a dorm room window, is on a hunger strike to pressure authorities into reopening her son's case. She says she knows no more now than what authorities told her that fateful night in October of 2018. I reasoned that either two things happened, either four people in the room watch him jump out that window or they had their hands and participated in him going out that window. It was JB's, as his friends knew him, 21st birthday. Danielle Brown told me she had just talked to her son that night. He told her he had gotten a haircut and was excited to see his family that weekend for the university's homecoming football game. But a few hours later, he was dead. Dear God, grant me serenity to accept the death of my son, Jalen. Today marks two days of her fast at Freedom Corner in the Hill District in search for answers. Let me really get their attention. Let me push back the plate and make my appetite his justice. Make, let me push back the plate and make my appetite my determination. According to police, JB had been acting erratically that night, pacing up and down the dorm hallway, prompting several students to call 911. Witnesses told police JB threw a chair through the residence hall window before jumping. Danielle Brown says four people were in that room when her son jumped, including campus police and security. She wants to know why they couldn't help her son. When the police came, that's where it gets murky. How did he go from being in the hallway to four officers and now he's 16 floors out the window? It just doesn't make sense to me. That was Shelley Bortz reporting. We did reach out to Pittsburgh police for comment. They say that investigations are always considered open and they don't know if police have been in contact with Brown. A fire ripped through a house in Salem Township in Westmoreland County last night. I have some pictures to show you that our partners at the Trib took. This is a house on Roosevelt Way. The man who lives there told the Trib that he was cooking on the grill and something exploded. Now, he and his family were inside at that moment, but they did all manage to get out okay. It was a really busy holiday weekend for the fireworks task force. It was overwhelmed with calls and complaints. Police and fire investigators answered 131 fireworks complaints on Saturday, and then another 125 came in just after midnight on Sunday. Officials say that fireworks triggered several fires and a number of people were hurt. Police say that neighbors got into a fight about fireworks on Lowry Street in the Hill, or the Troy Hill, I should say, and this ended with five people being taken to the hospital. And a big block party with fireworks in Lewis Park caused several fires to the deck hockey and the basketball courts as well as the playground equipment. And charges are pending, we're told right now, for some of the most serious incidents. We have that full breakdown for you on the WPXI News app. West Virginia experienced its biggest two-day jump in cases. So you can see that there were 76 cases on Sunday, 118 on Saturday, and new cases jumped 16% statewide in the last week. And this week we should find out if West Virginians will be required to wear masks in pu inside public buildings.
COVID cases nationwide certainly are continuing to spike in most cases, and that's happening as current relief packages are set to expire at the end of the month. Our Washington correspondent, Serena Mitchell, has more. Good afternoon. The current unemployment COVID package only goes through July 31st. And while Congress did extend the Paycheck Protection Program through the first week of August, they are only in session for three weeks when they return July 20th before they recess again through Labor Day. Both sides agree they need another deal, but that's where agreement ends. The majority leader says this will likely be the final major relief package for the pandemic. Coupled with a better than expected jobs report and a nationwide spike in cases, it sets up a tough negotiation. Who gets the money? Hospitals? Schools heading into the fall year? A new round of stimulus checks? complications layered by factions within the administration itself. Just this weekend, the president continued to downplay the rise in cases, a claim his FDA commissioner wouldn't defend. Now we have tested almost 40 million people. By so doing, we show cases, 99% of which are totally harmless. So we know that cases are surging in the country. I uh, totally support the CDC and the, the information that they're putting out. The CDC estimates that 35% of cases are asymptomatic, but they caution even those individuals can still spread the virus to others. Reporting from outside Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. Some testing sites are overcrowded, and that means that some people would rather do it at home themselves. So what do doctors think about these at-home tests? Well, doctor in Texas says that those tests do show some promise. He says results can be just as reliable as the ones from the tests at the COVID clinics. But the burden of performing the test correctly falls on you. If a swab is not obtained correctly, one runs the risk of having a false negative test, uh, meaning that you really do carry the virus, but the swab was not obtained correctly, and therefore the result tests are negative. Timing is also key here. It's best to wait at least three days after you've been exposed to COVID-19 before testing yourself. And those test kits can cost between $100 and $200. Your insurance might cover them. Coming up this afternoon, why the pandemic could lead to, lead to a really bad summer for ticks. And Levin Furniture is reopening some of its stores, what it means for customers with pending deposits. And I'll show you a forecast for this afternoon, and I've got an update to that rainfall forecast and who could see some strong thunderstorms in the days ahead. You're watching WPXI Now, your source for original local shows. All the best things happening in Pittsburgh in one place. Watch 11 Things to Do, Thursday and Friday mornings at 9.15 on WPXI Now and on demand.
You put on Channel 11 Morning News. There is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop. We don't stop. As a mom, I know your morning is busy. We're going to give you everything you need from the breaking news desk to weather and traffic. When you walk out that door, you're prepared. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. We are thrilled to be uh, back in business. Levin Furniture is back. After nearly going out of business twice, Levin Furniture began reopening some of its stores on Friday. Four furniture stores and five mattress stores in southwestern Pennsylvania are now open. Channel 11's Angie Moreski tells us what customers can expect. This is a happy day for Levin's Furniture customers who thought they'd never get their furniture or refunds. Now, the original owner is back and determined to make things right. So the good news is Levin Furniture is back. Robert Levin has a new commercial telling the story of his fight to get his century-old family business back after the company that bought it three years ago went bankrupt, leaving customers in the lurch. We're making every effort to take care of all of the customers uh, of Levin's. Customers have always been the lifeblood of this business. Levin bought his business back through bankruptcy court in a $26 million deal, partnering with the Schultz family, which owns several Ashley Furniture stores and has been in the business for three generations. The goal? To make Levin's a family business once again. So it doesn't happen what happened before where it gets turned over to a private equity and Wall Street people that uh, really don't care about uh, the employees or the customers and it was all about money. Central to regaining customer trust, honoring the deposits of customers to either get their furniture or a refund. If they do not want to place a new order with us, they already received their furniture. Uh, certainly understand it's been a length of time. Uh, uh, we have established a fund with the bankruptcy court as part of the proceedings. Nine stores will reopen in southwestern Pennsylvania. Some acquired by other businesses will not, including the original Mount Pleasant location. Frankly, uh, uh, devastating knowing that uh, our original store in Mount Pleasant, at least for now, uh, is not opening as a Levin Furniture store. The Schultz brothers will run daily operations, but the stores will retain the Levin name. Letters for customers with pending deposits will go out next week with details on how to get their furniture or money back. Angie Moreski, Channel 11 News. More help is coming to businesses that are hurting in Westmoreland County. The Greensburg Community Development Corporation created a new grant program. The Richard King Mellon Foundation has $150,000 available. According to the TRIB, the businesses can use the money for things that are not covered by the Federal CARES Act, like human resources, accounting, and marketing. If in-person instruction does start back up in the fall, both students and classrooms might need more supplies than they normally do. The Washington Salvation Army is gearing up to help students and teachers. Each year they give book bags filled with supplies to students in need, and they also give teachers supply boxes. That's to eight schools in the area. So here's why they think families and teachers will be relying on them more this upcoming year. You have a bucket of pencils, you have a bucket of crayons, a bucket of scissors. Um, I don't think that's going to be a reality in the fall um, as far as trying not to share germs and keeping sanitized. Um, the kids are going to really need their own supplies. So to help raise money for donations for the supplies, they also take kids back to school shopping for shoes, 200 kids to be exact. They are hosting a superhero drive through this Saturday, July 11th. Families can drive through Camp Agape and Hickory from 1 to 3 and see their favorite princesses and superheroes. And if you can't make it out there and you want to donate, we'll put information for you on WPXI.com. I also have information on my Facebook page for you. Six people were hurt in a crash on the turnpike that had traffic backed up for miles. This happened yesterday in Somerset County. Drivers say they were stuck for hours because of the crash. We're told that five people were flown to a hospital. One person was taken by ambulance. The crash involved two cars and a tractor trailer. And 19 people, including two kids, were hurt when a tree fell on a detached garage in Maryland over the ran for shelter in there when the storm came through on Sunday. They were celebrating a kid's birthday when that tree fell. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Great cool day out there. We've got plenty of sunshine. We'll have some fair weather clouds developing throughout the rest of the day. Temperatures 93 degrees this afternoon. Of course, you know the deal. Make sure you have your sunscreen on and you're going to want to reapply that often. Sunglasses in order as well today. Our UV index is a 10. It's very high. 
and so that means our burn time is about 15 minutes. So if you are out and about today, maybe you're going for a long walk, you're going to want to take a frequent break as well as uh, keep hydrated. Tonight's low is 70 degrees. This morning we had 68 as forecast, mostly clear tonight. Calm winds expected, so very warm start to the day tomorrow. Here's a look at our hour by hour forecast. We will start with sunshine at 8 o'clock 75. We're near 90 already at the noon hour tomorrow, and the temperature tomorrow will peak in the lower 90s once again, and I do expect a chance for some showers and some thunderstorms across our area. Today's chances are very limited. I'll show you that here in just a second. Here's 2 o'clock this afternoon. You can see dry conditions across the area. Much like the last couple of days, we really don't have a huge lifting source to get showers and storms going. So when you talk about thunderstorms forming, you need moisture, you need some heating of the day, and you need a lifting source. And uh, typically that could be a cold front. Uh, in the case of yesterday, it was the mountains. So the air is forced to rise up and over the mountains or the ridges. And so that's why we had a couple of showers and storms out there near Somerset in Johnstown yesterday. So much like the last couple of days, we're looking at the greater shot of that happening, a shower storm in the ridges and mountains this afternoon. Also could favor the southern counties and down south into Morgantown as well. We'll keep our eye on it. Anything that does pop up will be going away with the lack of heating of the day. Storm tracker, you can see as we head into your Tuesday morning, we are dry once again. The difference tomorrow is that we have a wave of energy that's going to be passing through the area at upper levels of the atmosphere. So I think that's going to be our lifting source for the day tomorrow, getting some showers and some storms going across the area, mainly afternoon. So here's 2 o'clock. You can see some cells developing over Allegheny County. Here's 6 p.m. So the coverage looks like it's going to increase a little bit for the day tomorrow, so more so than what we were expecting as the new data has been coming in. I've also been analyzing the data, and it does show that any storms that do pop up tomorrow afternoon could be on the stronger side, could actually produce some small hail, maybe even some gusty winds, and of course, lightning is a threat in any thunderstorm. Storm. Right now, I've got the weather risk low. We may need to bump it up just depending on how things go and trend in the overnight data. But in the meantime, we take a look at the five-day forecast. The heat is really a huge story in the next couple of days. We started this streak on the 3rd of July with the 90-degree-plus weather, and we're continuing here all the way into the end of the week, potentially. One of the hottest days looks to be Thursday at 95, mostly sunny to partly cloudy. Friday, 94. We'll back the temperatures off for the weekend a bit into the 80s, but still very warm out there with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Coming up in the next half hour, I've got an update to our summer-to-date rainfall. I know our, our grass is starting to turn brown out there, so we could really use a little bit of rain. Stick around. Yes, it certainly is, Danielle, my front yard in particular. Thanks so much. So I wanted to let you know that Uber is possibly going to strike a deal to buy Postmates for about $2.6 billion. The takeover could help Uber Eats gain some ground against DoorDash. Postmates has a strong foothold in Los Angeles and the Southwest. The deal comes just weeks after Uber failed its bid to buy Grubhub. New at noon, calls for a nationwide requirement to wear masks. But first, the event that could have a speedway in Colorado facing charges. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Three houses are on fire. This is an incredibly active scene. What's new? We remain in the green phase, but bars and restaurants have to take a big step back. The ban for on-site alcohol at bars and restaurants is in effect. And what's next? From June 21st to today, cases have climbed sharply. Basically, these numbers are going in the wrong direction. Notice the humidity starts to get in a humid range. Count on Channel 11 News for live coverage every morning.
When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. Welcome back. A racetrack could be in hot water after a 4th of July event. It's the Bandemir Speedway in Colorado. Apparently, it held the Jet Car Nationals event on Saturday. And according to health officials, track agreed to keep the attendance to 4,500 people. But as you look at these pictures from the sky, it appears that there were more than 4,500, and a lot of them did not social distance. Health officials say they will pursue legal action against the track. I do feel bad for those who went to this event feeling that things were going to be under control because we were involved and then again not having that uh, actually happen that way that is that is very concerning to me. Health officials fear that there will be more coronavirus cases in this area of Colorado because uh, of this and they will probably be tracked to this event. A drive-in at Walmart, that is what the retail giant is considering. So Walmart wants to turn about 160 of its store parking lots into drive-in theaters. The movies would be free and people could order snacks for curbside delivery. The locations that Walmart is considering have not been announced yet. Can the 2020 baseball season be saved? The big step Major League Baseball is taking. But first, how the pandemic could make the tick season worse this year. And I am tracking that chance for some showers and thunderstorms as we head through the day tomorrow when we could really use it. I've got an update to our summer to date rainfall when we come back. You're streaming WPXI now. Your source for breaking news, weather, and original local shows. Murder, mystery, and the missing. Justice Rules profiles real-life crime stories. Tuesdays at 9 p.m. right here on WPXI now. Nobody can read between the lies. She's an 18-year-old girl. She got a settlement. You saw a little money. You wanted a big red truck. Like Judge Judy. Shiny, shiny, shiny red truck. <laughs> Judge Judy. Weekdays at 4 and 4.30 on Channel 11. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Most states are seeing more coronavirus cases, and there are new calls for it to be a requirement to wear a mask nationwide. Scientists are also pushing the World Health Organization to acknowledge that you can get the virus from droplets left in the air. Here's NBC's Gabe Gutierrez.
As COVID cases mount across the country, the mass debate is intensifying. New Jersey's governor is now calling for a nationwide face covering mandate. We need a national strategy, I think, right now, and masking has got to be at the core of that. The New York Times also reports that hundreds of scientists are set to publish an open letter to the World Health Organization, urging the agency to revise its guidelines and acknowledge the virus can easily spread through the air indoors. Right now, less than half of states require wearing face coverings in public, despite CDC recommendations to do so. But even in those states, not everyone's following the rules. In North Carolina, a mask mutiny of sorts. Nearly none seen at this beach more than a week after a state mandate went into effect. Some customers outside of Walmart there defiant. If you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, you shouldn't have to. It's a free country. Everyone has the right to do as they please. In California, where masks have been mandatory for weeks, beachgoers in Santa Cruz are getting used to the routine. Mask is now part of your checklist. In New Jersey, Chris and C.J. Havens were among hundreds streaming into the newly reopened Six Flags Great Adventure theme park, keeping up their July 4th tradition with masks in tow. It's the right thing to do. The only difference would be once we finish this, we're going to trade them in for something a little more stylish. Some experts warn such a drastic change in behavior won't happen overnight. If you think about things like seat belts um, or smoke-free laws, that took years, decades even, uh, to change people's habits and make it become just a part of everyday life. New York City is now entering phase three of reopening, which means more businesses like massage parlors and nail salons can reopen at half capacity. But here in Restaurant Row, there is still no indoor dining amid concerns the virus can spread even more easily through the air. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, New York. It is another hot and dry afternoon with rain chances back in the forecast. Danielle, we really could use that way. We were just talking about how dry everyone's grass is. Yeah, it's really crunchy because it's just been a very little rain for us here across our area lately. So here's a look at our latest drought monitor. We've got abnormally dry conditions that have already set it up here in uh, Westmoreland and Fayette counties in the ridges. And these maps are actually updated every Tuesday and released every Thursday. So we'll have a new update for you on this and where we stand across the rest of the area later on in the week. I wanted to show you our latest summer to date rainfall and I just put this together 2.3 inches. That's how much we have seen since June 1st. The average is 4.94 inches. So we're actually below average by more than two and a half inches since the beginning of June. We haven't seen any rain yet so far this month of July and we actually average for the month of July alone about 3.8 inches of rain and we have heat in the forecast. We do have some rain chances in the forecast. I'm updating our storm tracker maps. I'll show you that coming up in just a few minutes. We are in the middle of tick season amongst all of this, and this year it could be worse than expected. Researchers are blaming the coronavirus for one. The head of a Lyme disease research group says that people are eager to get outside and explore after the shutdown of three months, and she's afraid people are going to let their guard down when they're hiking or camping. She also says that ticks are thriving this season because of the mild winter that we had. Pennsylvania leads the nation in the number of Lyme disease cases. Last year, there were more than 10,000 in our state. We have new details now. We have learned that search and rescue crews have found the body of a woman in Conneaut Lake. The NBC station in Erie reports that the woman fell off her speedboat yesterday afternoon. First responders and divers used sonar equipment and searched for more than six hours before finding her. A third former Minneapolis police officer who was charged in the death of George Floyd is out on bond. According to jail records, two Tau posted a $750,000 bond over the weekend. Three of the four officers charged in Floyd's death have now been released on bond. Floyd died as a result of an arrest on May 25th after an officer used his knee on Floyd's neck to pin him to the ground. I don't know, but you've been told. More than 100 kids and their families hit the streets to stand up against racism. If you were on the north side yesterday, maybe you saw the Children's March Against Racism. The organizer says it's about teaching kids to stop racism at a young age. We want our children to grow up respectful, to be respected, and to respect themselves and how they look. The group started the march on Maple Street and ended on North Avenue.
Leaders of an Ohio town have declared themselves a sanctuary city for historic statues. The manager of Newton Falls designed this proclamation proclamation, I should say, sorry, on the 4th of July. It says that the town will accept any statue removed throughout the country. It goes on to say that the great leaders of our country were flawed in many ways, but also made great achievements. Now, there is a petition online rejecting the city's pro proclamation. Quality of uh, what they're doing for, for the veterans. I mean, it's unreal. Unbelievable. A nonprofit is providing service dogs to veterans. Channel 11's Melanie Gillespie explains how their actions and local support are making us proud to be from Pittsburgh. Watch me. At this Grove City Park, five military veterans gather with their newest medical support given to them at no cost. This is remarkable. I cannot believe. Veterans like Jamie Grossman suffer with invisible wounds like PTSD or a traumatic brain injury. But with the help of dogs from the Florida based nonprofit Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs, they're regaining their independence. I would be very sheltered. I would not feel like I was very well to be out in public because something might play up. I might get anxious. I might have a breakdown. With her, she doesn't let me get that far. She just wants to make sure I'm okay. You know, just paying back all the respect that we have for them, giving them something that's going to give them a new normal. Guardian Angels founder Carol Borden says they see a lot of need and support from our region. We have just a wonderful, wonderful base of corporate sponsors and philanthropic minded individuals there that have welcomed us wholeheartedly over the past five years that we've been there uh, in their area. We have paired dozens and dozens of dogs in Pennsylvania. Our sports teams, PNC, and local foundations are just a few of the groups supporting the training for each dog, which costs about $25,000 each. 350 dogs have been given to people, and the support's appreciated by Schneider and his dog Spangle. Pittsburgh's been a very big staple in how, having my recovery here. Guardian Angels medical service dogs and supporters are making us proud to be from Pittsburgh. That was Melanie Gillespie reporting. The founder of Guardian Angel says they plan to expand to our area by building the campus first, which will provide more dogs to more people and provide jobs locally. The Pirates back on the field. What we're learning about MLB's plan to start the season. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we've been bringing you a special version of Local Steals and Deals, where we shine a spotlight on amazing companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses really are the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. With Local Steals and Deals, we bring you exclusive offers from these brands on products that make your life safer, brighter, and more fun at a time when we all really need it. Join us in making a difference. Simply pick up your phone and text USA to 65000 to learn more. The beginning. The first two cases of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is taking its toll on our region. Channel 11 has kept you informed, giving you the facts. I am declaring a state of emergency. Schools in Pennsylvania will be closing. Unemployment continues to rise. With a team you can trust, digging for new details. Brighton Rehab, bringing in the National Guard. How exactly this Reopening started. Reopening Pennsylvania will be done regionally. As our city reopens, Channel 11 News will cover everything happening in our area because we are coverage you can count on.
make sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. Welcome back. Tomorrow, New Jersey is doing a basically all mail-in primary, and this comes as mail-in elections are in question by some. President Trump's campaign sued Pennsylvania over mail-in voting. The lawsuit said that it can lead to fraud and could jeopardize the accuracy of the results. Every Pennsylvania county was named in the lawsuit, but Allegheny County was singled out because some voters were sent multiple ballots for the primary. This was the first time that we were allowed to cast mail-in ballots and not give a reason. Advocates say it was a safer way to vote during the pandemic. If you're missing baseball, you're probably excited to see when the Pirates will be playing. Major League Baseball is expected to release the 60-game schedule this week. Our partners at DKPittsburghSports.com say the Pirates will open the season on the road July 24th in St. Louis. They're expected to play 40 games against NL Central opponents and 20 games against AL Central teams. And we just found out that pitcher Blake's Cedarland and outfielder Socrates Brito both tested positive for the coronavirus. We do do contact tracing in terms of who they're around and when they were around them. Uh, and then there's a there's a protocol put in place that involves two negative tests before they can come back. And then there's some other things that they have to do medically before they can get back on the field. Major League Baseball was a hot topic on the final word last night. If you want to hear them talking about whether they think baseball will be able to keep going, you can find that video up right now at WPXI.com. The summer slide. Advice for parents worried about whether their kids will lose steam even more this summer because of the pandemic. It's dry across our area right now, but thunderstorms will be moving across throughout the day tomorrow. We've got your latest hour-by-hour -hour forecast when we come back. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on. Severe weather coverage where you live. On Channel 11 News. People are opening fewer new credit card accounts. A report from CompareCards.com found that the number of new credit cards open between April 15th and May 15th dropped 65% from 2019. But that is a smaller drop than the month earlier. New accounts from mid-March to mid-April plummeted 74% from the previous year. The number reflects the significant economic impact that the pandemic has had on consumer spending habits. This time of year, a lot of parents worry if their kids will remember everything they learned during the school year. But this summer, parents have a different concern. NBC's Chris Clackham has the details. 
In a typical summer, parents worry their child will suffer a loss of learning, otherwise known as the summer slide. Exercise. But this summer, even more so. It's not just been learning loss, it's been learning that never happened. Who ever would have known that we would be experiencing this kind of trauma? The extraordinary circumstances have educators and child development experts offering parents advice beyond just educating their children. This is a really crucial time for their social and emotional development. For example, getting a child to think beyond today. We try to keep kids focused on the future, future orientation. We want them to think about what would you like to do with your friends as soon as we don't have to stay home. Or convincing parents who've been forced into homeschooling to cut themselves some slack. And right now we're, we're really telling parents, please don't try to do this alone. Put salt and pepper on the chicken. They're emphasizing that as close as a few weeks from now, the summer slide will stall because schools will reopen. Chris Clackham, NBC News. And there is a 16-page workbook that you can download this summer to help the kids. The Mona Lisa is back in business. The museum that houses the most famous portrait in the world reopened today after a four-month lockdown. Masks are a must and visitors will be limited. As far as reservations, those are required now. About 70% of the giant museum is accessible to visitors starved of art in the lockdown. A local swimming pool will be closed this week after an employee might have been exposed to the coronavirus. The mayor of Forest Hills decided to close the pool there. All pool employees are being asked to get tested. He also closed the pool because of the health department and the limit on the number of people who can gather. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Good afternoon. Taking a look here at our tower camera, and we've got that sunshine out there. We've got a heat index of 86, but an air temperature at 88. That's because the air right over Pittsburgh right now is dry, so that's why we're finding that heat index that's actually lower than the air temperature. Not the case in every location. Let me show you the temperatures across the board right now. 91 in Greensburg, 85 Butler, 90 already in Indiana. And when you factor in a little bit of humidity in some other places, it will feel a little bit hotter than the air temperature as the dew points are a bit higher. Grilling forecast for the rest of today. 93 degrees by 6 p.m., so we are in for yet another day. So three, four, five, six. This will be like the fourth day in a row of 90s. I was going back to the third in my head. 91 at 7 p.m. and then 89 at 8 p.m. So we are looking at this string of 90s continuing as we head into the end of the week. So here's how many we've had so far the entire year, four, and the average is nine. The warmest so far, 93 degrees, which we reached over the weekend. Our recent hot stretches, some of you guys have been chiming in on social media wondering about this, so I put this together. July 15th through July 19th of 2013, we had five days in a row of 90 plus degree weather, the warmest 91 degrees. Back on July 1st through July 7th of 2012, we had seven days in a row and the warmest there was 98. The record, in case you're curious, 13 days, and that was back in 1988. Take a look at our morning planner tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine. Temperature will already be at 75 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. Here's a look at the rest of the highs. 91 in Indiana, 91 in Uniontown, and 92 in Washington, going with that high here of 93. Our humidity forecast will continue to increase as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. By the middle of the week, it's going to feel sticky to steamy, which means heat index values will climb into the mid to upper 90s. Our car wash forecast, throwing out the caution flag for today. And that's really only because there's a stray shower or thunderstorm chance, but mainly confined to Fayette and Westmoreland counties as well as Green County and then down to the south. So the ridges, uh, also the mountains could get in on a stray shower or storm for this afternoon. Tuesday, I've updated this forecast to don't wash your car because we do expect now some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Here is the latest storm tracker maps. Dry in the morning and sunny on Tuesday. Clouds will begin to build, though, with the heating of the day. A little bit of moisture combined with some lift in the atmosphere is going to be bringing in some scattered showers and thunderstorms, mainly after the lunch hour, and will continue with that chance into the evening. So some strong downpours, some lightning, maybe even some small hail and gusty winds out of the strongest thunderstorms. Five-day forecast, 90s continue. Perhaps our warmest day being Thursday at 95, 94 on Friday. We'll cool things off just a little bit for the weekend, but we're also bringing in more scattered showers and thunderstorms. How about this, Danielle? We're talking about 
being hot here. How about up in Norway? They actually got some snow. <laughs> yes, it is winter, but Norway got some snow, several inches of it. In fact, it fell over the weekend. You could see ice there. Uh, looks like the road's a little bit snowy, even looks like snowy off into the distance there. Apparently 145 miles northwest of Oslo. That's where it really forced tourists to try to change their plans because they probably didn't bring their snow gear with them, is my guess. The NHL is one step closer to getting back to action. What teams need to do before they can hit the ice. Here's Local Steals and Deals, Lisa Robertson. Hey, hey, Lisa Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals. You know what the hardest part of my morning was? Staying awake. Huh, to talk to you guys because this is so comfortable. So this is the most plush, soft foam chair. Oh my gosh. But here's the great part. Not only is this a chair, it's also this bed. The bed is in the chair and the chair is covering the bed. So now this is gonna be such a great idea because it's the super soft plush foam. Love it. And this is gonna go in your kids' room so they can read, they can play video games, they can watch TV, they can have their friends over. Great place to sit, right? Everybody wants this in their room. This is in the family room. This is in the TV room. This is in the dorm room. This is at the beach house. Everybody wants this chair. But then when someone comes to stay over, you don't have enough to have, you don't have to have an extra mattress. You don't have to have an air mattress, which by the way, usually not very comfortable. This is super comfortable. And the, this opens up and it becomes the bed. Isn't that great? And then you don't have to put it anywhere else. You simply, when they're done, put the bed back in the chair. This is such a fabulous idea. And I have to say, this is one that they loved on Shark Tank. Laura Grenier loved this. This is something that everybody's fighting over. I guarantee you, everybody in the house is going to fight over this chair on TV net. I'm just warning you right now. And if you're saying, wait a minute, my kids, you know, they're really tough on things. I have pets. The cover of this chair is machine washable, pet friendly, awesome. So now you don't have to have a guest bedroom. You don't have to have an extra mattress. You don't have to have anything you don't already have in the most comfortable chair ever. And that is the corduroy's convertible plush foam chair. I'm telling you, good luck getting me out of this because I'm staying here for the rest of the morning. I'm going to take a nap in this as soon as we're done. So wake me when you need me for the next segment. Oh, P.S. And by the way, full or queen size, you get to choose 20% off localsteals.com. I'm going to get to napping. Have a good one. going on your vacation, Barney. It's the summer of me, your TV vacation destination. You going on vacation, Sergeant? Any day away from you, pile, I consider a vacation. The perfect getaway is right at home. What am I going to do this summer? With me, TV. As always, featuring some of the greatest TV shows ever made. Yes, sir. I'm going to lay around home and just take it easy. You can find Me TV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169, and on these and other providers.
nobody can read between the lines, like Judge Judy. The Meadows is now smoke-free. This weekend, they banned smoking throughout the entire casino, and that's not the only change right now. They are also pausing on-site wagering because of the spike in coronavirus cases. Live racing will continue, but the racetrack is closed. You have to place your bets online. The NHL is one step closer to getting back on the ice. The league and the players reached a tentative agreement to restart. Here's the deals of it. So if it's approved, teams would start training camp next Monday. They'd travel to hub cities on July 25th and start a 2014 playoff. The Eastern Conference will play in Toronto and the Western Conference is in Edmonton. Games would start by August 1st and that Stanley Cup final, that would likely be in early October. Players have until Tuesday to sign the deal. Take a look at this here. Jacksonville Jaguars offensive tackle Jawan Taylor hooked the fish of a lifetime. Yes, that apparently is a 400-pound fish. I didn't know fish could get that heavy. That is off the coast of Florida there. Look at that thing. Woo. Kind of a scary picture there, but he took a picture, obviously, because that is a super prized catch there before he did set it free. You can really tell how big it is next to that person who is in the water. That'll do it for us here on Channel 11 News at Noon. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. Our next newscast is tonight at 5. Of course, you can get breaking news anytime by just going to our streaming apps. All you have to do is search for WPXI on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Hope you have a wonderful day. WPXI is proud to partner with UPMC to present Community Matters.